Hello, I'm Gaz Oakley, a vegan chef from Wales, and I'm a very proud Welshman. I'm actually going on a culinary journey through my home country to cook up some amazing food and show you guys what this beautiful country has to offer. Welcome to Wales. We've just got to Porthliskey Farm in St. David's, Pembrokeshire, where I'm going to be picking Pembrokeshire new potatoes. These are some of the best potatoes I've ever eaten in my life, and I'm so happy to be at a farm that grows these amazing potatoes year on year. We're right by the sea, and it's just so beautiful being here. So let's go and pick some potatoes, and I'm going to cook something amazing after two. All right then, let's go pick some potatoes. You can just about see the sea through there, but we'll walk down and go into one of the fields where you can see. Okay. Because we're right at the peak in St. David's here, so it's sort of 360 degrees of sea. So we, um, in Pembrokeshire, we've got the Gulf Stream. Right. So it's like warmer temperatures that come off the sea air onto the coast. So farms like this don't experience frost the same, and that's where we can grow potatoes slightly earlier. That's why Pembrokeshire is so famous for its potatoes, I think. Crazy. How many acres is this farm, do you know? So he's got 50 acres, so he's quite a small producer. See, that is, seems massive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm be being forced to do yeah. lots of manual labour on this trip. <laughs> so yeah, we just go in and dig under the root, basically, of the crop, and then we can grab them. I will hand over the fork, the fork of power, <laughs> so you can have a go. So smell these good. are perfectly ready to they come out of the ground. So good. Potatoes from Wales. And even though these have just been um, topped off, so they're ready to harvest, you can still peel them with your finger. Yeah. So that's their famous flaky skin. I'm going to hand over the fork and I'm oh, going to give you the no. power to try yourself. It's going to show me up now. <laughs> so in and under. Oh, there we go. I've got one. Got one. Keep going. <laughs> Aim for the centre. If you need a bit of more of a get your foot involved. That's it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Got some mini ones. I could do this if it, the weather was like this all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's the perfect day to come potato picking. Actually, if it's miserable, you actually, do it. Actually, we need yeah. to say that it's always like this in Pembrokeshire. Yeah, well. <laughs> do you reckon I get a job here? If you can do 50 acres, I'm sure you'll have a job. <laughs> so Robin and the team will come out and check these potatoes at various stages of their growing cycle as well. Yeah. Our farmers have been farming Pembrokeshire for generations. They've been around since the 1700s in Pembrokeshire. So um, we've got third, fourth, fifth generation farmers now. So it's the skills and knowledge for growing as well as the soil and the nutrients and the temperature. Oh, that's so good. Should we get some more? Yeah, I feel like I just want to keep, keep digging. digging. <laughs> yeah, go for it. He's not going to have any left by the time I've <laughs> There we go. Uh, oh, is that the is that the, the root? That's the seed potato. The seed potato, and you leave that one in. Uh, so that potato would have been put in last year, and the whole plant would have grown from that. So it contains all the nutrients that the potato plant needs to grow. And dependent on the size of the potatoes, we'll probably get between twelve and fifteen potatoes per plant. Oh wow! Yeah. So per plant, you could feed a family, yeah. more or less. We rival Jersey Royals, Pem uh, Cornish new potatoes, Scottish news as well. But because of the temperature difference here. And this. Look well, at that. yeah. They do come out slightly different times of the year as well. So Jerseys tend to be a little bit earlier because they're more southerly. And then Cornish, and then we come in, and then you get the Scottish after. Um, but we definitely think they're the best ones in the UK. Well, I've eaten loads <laughs> of them, but I can't wait to cook them today on the beach. I know how to do this now. Yeah. After a few goes, I was digging like a mole and I had to be stopped before I took too many potatoes. Look at this view. Welcome to Wales.
So we're at the beach now, it's so beautiful. And I'm actually gonna go and get some seawater to cook the amazing potatoes in. And that's gonna give it a really nice salty flavor. Let's go and get some water. This is beautiful. I'm gonna have to take my shoes off and get in because I don't want any sand in this water if I can help it. And don't think I'm crazy getting seawater to cook my potatoes. This type of thing, this technique is used uh, to make seafood pasta all the time. That natural saltiness is great for cooking things like pasta, potatoes, etc. in. So let's go and get some. Woo! This is quite cold. <laughs> this is some beautiful wild seawater. It's crystal clear and there's no sand or anything in that. This is going to be perfect to cook the potatoes in. And I need to get out because it's actually really cold. <sighs> Hello. Getting some cooking water. He was he was so confused right then. <laughs> it's natural salt, which is what you need. Oh, the puddles are so warm. Oh, lovely. I'm coming, Meg. It was beautiful. Okay, so we're at my little makeshift kitchen on the beach. This is one of the most amazing places I've ever cooked. I'm so happy to be here. I've got the sand between my toes. Anyway, we've got our salt water boiling now and I'm gonna get those amazing potatoes straight in that we've just lightly washed. So there's a little makeshift lid as well. That water is beautifully seasoned from the salt, so we don't need to do anything else to those. And I'm actually gonna serve these potatoes uh, with a mojo sauce, which is something that I was inspired by when I went to the Canary Islands. It's basically a red pepper sauce. I'm gonna do a little cheats version. Just want a nice dipping sauce to complement these amazing, creamy, rich potatoes. If you're at home, just throw all these ingredients into a blender and just puree it. You don't need to just chop it like me. I'm just short of electricity out here, but it's nice to do it rustically. I'm going to add some peeled roasted red peppers to the mix. Who needs a blender? I'm just going to add some salt to the water. It's a joke. Come on. So to help this puree up and to season it, just a touch of Halamon salt, which I got yesterday. And some paprika to give it that little spice and that little Spanish twist. This is a nice little Welsh Spanish style dish. And also some thyme, which I also picked yesterday. Smells incredible. Would have liked a glass of wine right now. Keith Floyd is a legendary uh, cook. So he would be out here right now, Keith Floyd, be cooking in a beautiful area like this and he'd have a bottle of wine for the cooking, but he'd drink probably three quarters of it himself. It would always result in some entertaining uh, cooking TV, right? Yeah. <laughs> now this smells epic. But I just want to chop it a little bit longer, so I want it as fine as I can, really. Does that look beautiful? Ah. Aching. check on our potatoes looking good okay to make this more saucy I'm gonna add some really nice smoked olive oil if you don't want oil at all just leave it out and mix this up now so we got to give this a little taste bendy get egg so we managed to cook potatoes that we just picked in seawater on a beach that's very windy and make the most amazing sauce to go with it now I'm gonna to have to try and drain them off. And I don't have a colander, I don't have a sieve, I'm gonna use a masher. Let's try and do it. <laughs> and I'm gonna get them straight into this bowl with the sauce, and I want it all to be coated. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Look at that. A bit of time on the top. All right, there we have it. There's my Pembrokeshire new potatoes. Let's give these a taste. Wow, that is like Welsh gold. Mmm, that is amazing. The potatoes are so creamy. 
The sauce works so well with a little bit of acidity. Cooking these in salt water was a great idea, I think. I had such a nice seasoning to them. I could eat a full bowl of these Pembrokeshire new potatoes. A taste of Wales with a little bit of Spanish. Next we were in St David's Town Centre where a few years back I bought my famous chopping board. I'm back at Tinker's Kitchen aka The Woodman to get a new one. And how much is this one? This is just under 195. 95. Well, that's a great board. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's whether the board chooses me. Yeah, it's like or, it's like ordering a uh, yeah. wand. Yeah. That is pretty amazing, isn't it? I think you like this one. It's called Olivarsh, and this is from the Paselli Mountain. Do you know what I like about the board that I got from you last time? Is that nothing stains it, which I was worried about at first. Obviously, I'm only cooking vegetables and that. It's oh. naturally antibacterial as well, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm at the Woodman now in St. David's. Look at this beautiful Welsh wood. This is where I got my famous chopping board from. Look at that board. Come on. It's absolutely beautiful. What's that? I found a, some hippie yesterday. Go, <laughs> in the street. Right. I would love to take this one we've decided. Could have cooked some potatoes using that. Getting high off the fumes as well, so it's a win-win. Watch my beard, it's getting seriously warm up here now. Thank you very much. It's lovely seeing you again. Good. And uh, you'll see my your board in uh, my videos soon. See you soon, man. Bye-bye. Right, so now we're off to do some rock jumping into the very crisp and cold Welsh water. I love the smell of wetsuits. Really? Honestly. Do you know wheatgrass? I, I juice wheatgrass and I said, I said when I had it, these, it literally smells like wetsuits. Cool. All right. Thank you. You want to try it on the changing rooms there? Oh, no, I'll be fine. I'll look great, I'm sure. Skinny legs. That's perfect. Oh, we're going to look wicked. Quick Welsh Oggy, then we were on the road to the Blue Lagoon. The lagoon is actually a former slate quarry and was active up until 1910 before being abandoned and flooded. All right, let's jump in some water. Cliff jumping. It's now become a great tourist spot, offering great walks and views. And if you're a thrill seeker, there's loads of adventure activities you can do. Look at the water over there. Look at the color on that. We're gonna jump in there now. Uh, I'm so excited right now. I haven't done cliff jumping since I was a little kid, but in West Wales, the water is looking beautiful. We need to swim across and we're gonna jump off over there, but first we need to get changed into a wetsuit, so cover your eyes. After just a couple of days, I've fallen deeper in love with my home country. I can't wait to see what's to come. We're going to Kaya Buddy Bay, and I'm with Julia and John, and we're gonna forage for some seaweed. Careful, guys. So Julia's just picked this out of the water. This is sea lettuce. It looks absolutely beautiful, actually. Oh, I can see a sea urchin by there. I've lost about three inches here. Do you know that one? No, I don't. This looks very interesting. Okay. That looks like the back of an animal. Don't like that one. 